take your hymn books, turn to hymn number 89, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Please stand and sing with us, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Hymn number 89. <laughs>
to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. Exhort people so they will be continually continuing for the faith. Now we find the, the two words there in, in uh, verse 8 and verse 9. But let's go back uh, in that chapter. You'll find there in verse 5. It talks about some things there likewise. Ye other, submit yourselves to the elderly. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Our Sunday school teacher talked about that this morning. And I think I was the most humble person in the class. <laughs> you got to miss it on that one, didn't you? You know, what, what replaced, pride is what pushes out God, okay? And so he's talking about this in this, in this text. We find also in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, um, you go to 2 Peter chapter 1 and you'll find in verse number 3, according as his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to the glory and virtue. Power, power in God's word, divine power, and we find likewise through this knowledge we are called unto his glory, the glory that awaits us in the coming of eternity. And so we find the word of God is powerful, more powerful than a two-edged sword. For the word of God is quick and is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the, even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit. And so we are to recognize the power of God's word and how it is. I mean, let me show you something. I carry this. I, I, I used to carry this all the time, but I quit carrying it. I keep it in a special place in my home. That is the most powerful book I have ever owned. Okay? Y'all remember Emmanuel and Emmanuel and I. And I was preaching there in front of that church for those people. They were there. They allowed me to do this. And as I was sharing the word of God that night, a big, strong man jumped up and shook his face at my shook his fist at my face. I knew I had to show strength because of the suffering people there in Emmanuel. And so I held this Bible right there. Now I knew that the the reporter told me they were looking for a riot. Why, why, why is this not like Ferguson? And I said because these folks are Christians. So I knew they were they were looking for a riot. I held this Bible in front of my face, and no harm was done to me, and by the power of the Word of God. Now, Amen. the Word of God is more powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. We find the key words as we go back in our lesson there is in verse number two, a willingness. Do you have a desire and a willingness to serve the Lord? That's a good question. Another key word is examples. We are to be like uh, we are to be a good, uh, we are to be a good example. Another word there in verse four is the fact that awaiting us is a crown. So we are uh, engaging these thoughts. We find in verse eight the word be, be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant. Why? Because we have an adversary, the devil. Be strong, be sober, be vigilant. He is, a, he is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he... He is seeking you and me, those whom he can devour. Keep that in mind. So then we find verse number 9 gives us, okay, be steadfast, solid, sure, strong, <coughs> Not budging. We find in Hebrews 2 2 says the word of God is the word spoken by angels was steadfast, firm, solid. Hebrews 6 19, which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast. And so it's very, very important that we stay the course, be steadfast, recognizing that we do have an enemy. Suffering does come to us, but do, but do not let suffering overwhelm you, but be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, being steadfast. Now, why do sometimes Christians falter and fall by the wayside? I know we've all had our ups and downs in life. Why do we sometimes find this to happen? Journey with me in the book of Psalms, chapter 78. In Psalm 78, 
a parable is given. And it's a reference to Israel. Okay? In the days of Israel. And we find there in verse 5, For he established a testimony in Jacob, appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. Hmm. Bear that in mind. Notice that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Keep that in mind. Verse 7, that they, may, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Keep that in mind. Okay? It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. What is my best defense in dealing with Satan and these challenges that we're talking about? What is it that led to Israel to where they were not steadfast in their relationship with God? That should be our interest here this morning. Now, journey with me if you like, but just listen carefully. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. Deuteronomy 6, verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. Okay? Here's our assignment. I remember my first day in school. The assignment was to memorize it. Alphabet. Here's our assignment, our alphabet, our alphabet, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, being steadfast. What is the secret? As the Lord God of thy, of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Point number two. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be as, and they shall be as frontless before thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on the gates. How do we protect ourselves from becoming disarrayed, disheartened, and falling apart? How do we maintain a steadfastness? The children of Israel did not. Why? Because they themselves did not maintain a day-by-day, -day, constant day in the Word of God. You go for a week without, without the Word of God and you will be faltering. You will be losing that, that focus of determination and that sense of certainty within. The verses I just read to you come from a Hebrew word, shima, shima meaning listen to this. Talk about God's Word. Make it a part of your conversation. Hide the Word of God before you, like front, so that you can close your eyes and see the Word of God. I was speaking at a funeral yesterday, and I just asked a question. Show me in the Bible the scriptures that you go to to assure yourself and others that you are a born-again Christian. <coughs> You know you're going to heaven, and that is a certainty. Because salvation is not based on some little wheels hanging out in his face. It's something solid in your heart. So we are challenged to be steadfast. How do we protect ourselves from faltering as did the children of Israel? Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. Numbers 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying this, Speak unto the children of Israel, bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders of their ribbons of blue. 
And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye also go up, that ye may remember and do the commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Now, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, spiritually speaking. Before you became a Christian, you were living in bondage as a servant to Satan. When you became a Christian, he led you out. So we find in Deuteronomy and the book of Numbers the, the importance of lodging the word of God in your heart every day. Every day. I was told that Billy Graham even had a Bible in his bathroom. Bible in your car, Bible by your bed, wherever you are, take time every day to read the Word of God. Because those folks in Israel faltered in this, and they were like a light switch. A light switch. You know, some people are that way. On and on. On and on. On. Oh, they in church two, three Sundays, and then off, and you don't know where they're going to. And then after a while, they show back up, and they all, no. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we have men and women are here, right here, rubbing shoulders. These are the people who are committed in being actively involved in the ministry at Trinity Bible Church. Go with me back to 1 Peter chapter 5. Go back to verse 8 and verse 9. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary is the devil. Okay? Verse number 9. Whom resist steadfast in your faith. Resist Satan steadfast in your faith. If you go back in the, in the Bible and read in the stories there in the, uh, in the Old Testament, you'll find the story in the book of Numbers about a man named Balaam and a man named Balak. Balaam had some special spiritual insights at times. He was very well known, and he was called upon at times for get, to be given insights from God. Balak was king, okay, of, of Moab, and, and the children of Israel have, are coming through. And they are two million plus people and cattle and everything. And he's very upset with their presence and he wants them destroyed. So Balak, the king, sends for Balaam to come and pronounce a curse on the children of Israel. I'll not get into all the details of the story. But we find that Balaam is guilty of perverseness. He is. He, 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 he has the truth, but sometimes he turns the truth for his own purpose and gain. It's like, it talks here about, we're not to preach for money. We're not to uh, preach God's word for uh, filthy lucre. If I, um, if I were to do this for that reason, then I would be guilty of the perverseness of. And this man, Balaam, he was called upon to pronounce a curse upon the children of Israel. And because he was halfway doing what God said to do and halfway saying not doing what God wanted to do, he's riding his donkey, and his donkey turns and goes onto a field, and he jerks the rowel and brings it back in line. So then the donkey is coming through a narrow space, and the donkey slams his leg against the wall and almost breaks his foot, and he starts talking about slaying the donkey, and the donkey says, did you know donkeys can talk? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're looking at one right now, okay? <laughs> what? <laughs> when my, sister, my cousin found out that I was going to ministry, she said, You can't be a preacher. You can't talk. She said, When we played softball in the yard, you would say, Short sure ball! Short sure ball! <laughs> Nobody's going to understand the word you say. Interesting.
you want God to do. Now, Amen. so we find the, the donkey was doing this because there was an angel with a drawn sword. Of course, Balaam can't see this, and the donkey does it. So the third thing the donkey does is falls down. Well, Balaam is halfway doing what God said to do, and then halfway not doing what God said to do. And he got himself all tangled up, and he ended up joining the midnight later, uh, midnight later, and cost him his life. Look with me at the book of James, chapter four. Uh, the book of James, chapter 4. Look at me there, if you will, okay? Verse 1 through verse 7. James, chapter 4. Go down, if you will, and look at these verses. From which came wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. <coughs> ask, and ye shall receive, because ye ask the midst. Goes on, talks there about the adulterers, etc. He says, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Where? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Listen to this very carefully. Verse 5, James 4, verse 5. Do ye think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The old nature, it's talking about. It. The Bible speaks of this. Is it in vain that the Bible says that old nature in you is against God? It has to be dealt with. Okay? That the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And so he's challenging our hearts. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Something that 2 Peter tells us, right here in the same area in the scripture, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, verse 16. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam. We talked about it earlier, okay? Balaam, he had some insights with God. He was not all the way, but he was very... Impressive and Balak asked him to come and curse children of Israel. He would not because God said, No, there's a star coming out of Israel. That star would, of course, be Jesus Christ. <coughs> Who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. He talks about the dumb donkey speaking, talking to him. And so, what do we see here. We see that which erodes within us a sense of confidence, a sense of steadfastness. And our defense, my defense, besides yourself, yours, my defense is this book. Word of God. Amen. If you're not in the Word of God every day, that old nature is hammering away at you, digging at you. Trying to pull you to one side or the other. If you're not in the Word of God as your first line of defense, you'll not stand steadfast. It is the Word of God that keeps us solid and secure. Steadfast mission, we go back into the book of Luke, it says, When the time was come, Jesus should be received up. He steadfast set his face to go to Jerusalem. When he knew the time was come that he was going to be offered up as a sacrifice, down across for our sins, he focused on Jerusalem. Now, if God has called you into a particular ministry, and he has, all of us, each one of us, you have stead, you have you, 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 you remain steadfast, you're in church today, you could have stayed home. 
you know, you could do something else. But we have a mission. You have a mission with, between you and the Lord, and we each have. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, For we are being partakers of Christ, if we behold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We have a mission. Notice carefully. For we are partakers, partners of Christ. Side by side. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hold fast. What verses do you hold on to? What stays your course? Peter Cartwright was traveling across the prairie to Fulton, wide open, Indiana, Kansas. And he, in the early mornings as he began his journey, he would pick up a peak, a mountaintop or something, way in the distance. And he would keep his eye focused in that direction. Listen to this. Faith is the root of salvation. I repeat. Faith is the root of salvation. Endurance is the fruit. Stay in the cross. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. Continuing in the course. Who are Christ's companions? Who are they that, his, that are his companions? Those who by their steadfastness of the faith Prove that they really belong to him. Steadfast in the faith. Stay in the course. Fellow worker with Christ. Side by side. Pulling together. Like an ox. A yoke of oxen. That yoke is there so if one, yoke, one ox goes off, it binds on his neck and makes it comfortable. <coughs> it's important that we together in Christ. Be careful of your friends that they are a positive influence on you in your Christian faith. Amen. Okay? Be careful that your friendships are enriching your Christian relationship with Christ. If it is eroding, <laughs> serious problems down the road. What was the defense that God gave Israel to stay the course? The Word of God. Hide the Word of God in your heart that you might not sin against Him. Colossians says, Steadfast of your faith in Christ. Steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Stay the course. How do you stay the course? You have to have time alone with the Lord in the Word of God. Let him do most of the talking by reading the Word of God. Spend some, spend some time in prayer, alone in prayer, by your bed, wherever you are. Always be conscious in your relationship of prayer with the Lord. Be steadfast. And that can only be that can only come true if you stay steadfast in the Word of God. I'm not a big fan of uh, this GPS stuff, uh, but GP what God got the love now. GPS. GPS. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. Of but there are times when I you know. It's, but you know I learned this if you if you use it and you go somewhere. You better use it again the next time you try to go there. Because you're not going to know anything about the landmarks. Okay? You're not going to know anything about what's down there. The Word of God, if you're not following the Word of God on a daily, regular basis, you're not going to know where you are in your Christian faith. It's important that you have, I would encourage you to read the Bible through at least in a year. Read two or three or four or five chapters in the Old Testament, starting with the book of Genesis, if you will. Uh, so I suggest you might want to do that. Um, you can do either way. 
I, I do the Old Testament a, a lot of times in, in the morning, and I do the New Testament in the, uh, in the evening. I like to go to sleep with the New Testament in my mind. I like to go to sleep with the Word of God in my mind. Stay steadfast. The children of Israel faltered because the Word of God was not on their doorposts, the brightness of their eyes, here, there, and yonder. Stay in the course. Now, stay steadfast until the end. If you go to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, you'll find, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. If you go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53 through verse 58, it's talking about their, um, the Christian, where we are. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Okay? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So where are we going? Why are we doing this? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of, uh, work of God, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. But what is it prior to this, what we find? For this corruptible must put on corruption, this mortal must put on immortality. You're not going to heaven as you are now. This corrupted, corruptible body must be put aside. So he's talking about dying. He's talking about the certainty of death. But he gives us this assurance, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Never lose sight of your someday time in eternity. Live each day as though this day is your last day. Hide the word of God in your heart. Memorize scripture. Maintain an ongoing conversation with the Lord, which can only be true through the word of God, through fellowship, through prayer. Steadfast. Steadfast. Let me take you to an Old Testament story. A man named Daniel, hauled off into captivity. A lot of things are happening. And then now he is under the king Darius. And people are very jealous of him because he is faithful to his God in prayer. A decree is made, you're not to pray to no other gods but to King Darius. You know the story. And Daniel is thrown into the lion's den. Because the law of the Medes and Persians could not be altered or changed. Even the king could not prevent that. And those who were plotting to have Daniel put aside because of jealousy, plotted to have this decree that you could pray to no other god except King Darius for that period of time. Daniel had been praying with his window open, looking towards Jerusalem. So everybody would know, well, everybody would know to whom he is praying. The decree was made. Daniel still opens the shutters and he faces Jerusalem and he prays. His accusers haul him in, bring the charges. King Darius can do nothing about it because the law of the Medes and the Persians was greater than the law of the king. And so Daniel is thrown in the lion's den. I tell young preachers, I've mentored about seven preachers now in my life, some of them have passed away. Uh, we all know Carol Joy, Brady Denham, so on and so forth. I tell them, if God's called you into ministry, you make sure that God has called you, and you're there because God has called you, because out yonder on the horizon awaits lion dens. Okay? 
Satan does all he can to destroy those who preach God's word. And so Daniel's in this lion's den. You know the story. The angel shuts the lion's mouths, and Daniel, he props up and nestles up on the mane of the old lion and just has a good night's rest. Break of dawn, the king didn't sleep at all. He comes crying, screaming, Daniel, Daniel, did your God spare you? Did he save your life? Are you alive? Are you okay? Tell me, Daniel, are you all right? And then Daniel responds, but his God has spared his life. And so King Darius makes a decree. Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men shall tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For his God is the living God, and his God is steadfast forever. Don't you doubt one minute that God is not steadfast. Don't you doubt one minute that Jesus Christ is not steadfast. When you come to your last breath, and you lose sight of this world that we live in, and you begin to see the kingdom of God before you, just bear in mind, He is steadfast. He will see you through. He will see you through eternity. He is steadfast forever, and His kingdom shall not be destroyed, and His dominion shall be forever and ever and ever and ever. And so how does one stay steadfast in the Lord? personal experience with the Lord and the Word and the Word of God in prayer. Because the day will come when God Almighty who is steadfast will see you through the trials of life, see you through the, the challenges of life, see you through the valley of the shadow of death, will see you into the shores of eternity. And so this is why he is challenging us here as we go back in the Word of God. To stand fast, okay? Be sober, be vigilant. Because you have the adversary, Satan. Be sober, be vigilant. You have the adversary, Satan. So resist him. Resist him always. Whom resist steadfast in your faith until the very end. If God could convince King Darius that God was steadfast, who is it he could not convince? Remember your faith. Be steadfast with the Lord. Keep the faith. Keep yourself in the Word of God. Hide the Word of God in your heart. I ask you this question. Right now, if, if, if I was talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, I'd say, can you show me in the Bible where you know you're going to heaven? A verse or verses that tells you, and you know these are personal verses to your heart, that you have trusted Christ as your Savior. Secondly, Where is your Bible? Or Bibles? Where do you keep them? How often do you read them? Anytime you are in a position of disarray, distraught, heaviness of heart, the answer is here. Amen. Amen. It's right here. Jim Birmingham says, if you want to be stressed out, read the book of Job. But if you want to be comforted, read the book of Psalms. <coughs> Father in heaven, we pray your spirit to be upon us. May we stead, be steadfast in faith, holding fast to the word of God as we are faced with Satan every, each and every day. Bless the hearts and lives of this church family. Enrich each in our faith and relationship with you, Lord. May we be steadfast unto the end. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray.